Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So today we do have another new rank for mutant showcase and it is going to be Emma Frost. Now Emma Frost is uh, many people's favorite for some extremely obvious and few less so obvious reasons. But when she came out she was also extremely unique champion and she still is to this day because of the amount of immunities that she can have and also the fact that Despite seeming relatively straightforward to play, there is quite a lot of nuance in using Emifrost. Unfortunately, it kind of seems that she fairly quickly fell into that mid-tier mutant rank where she definitely was great, but there weren't too many places or applications of Emifrost to completely shine and be like the best go-to option. At the same time, the amount of things that she can do is quite astonishing. And uh, I have made a fairly lengthy showcase video when Emifrost was a relatively new champion to the game. So all that being said, if you do have your own interesting rank ups and you do want to showcase champions on this channel and your gameplay to be showcased in a video just like this, definitely check out Evizone who has partnered up with me. It is a great messaging and file transfer service. It's super easy to use and it's also the best way to get in touch with me and send me gameplay in high quality without any compromises. So. Check out the video description and uh, you'll find all the necessary links and information there. That being said, let's check out what we have here right in front of us. Now, I haven't watched this entire clip myself, but uh, here we see that it is a full uh, Liquid Courage Double Edge Mastery setup. And obviously, Emma Frost starts the fight in diamond form almost always. And that, I mean, she does start it always, I think. That basically lets her um, shrug off Liquid Courage Double Edge debuffs immediately. So she is quite compatible with Liquid Courage Double Edge. Only thing that you do have to worry about in longer fights is recoil because she has no way to mitigate recoil damage. Let's see how she performs against Winter Soldier here. So in Diamond form, you gain prowesses by successfully parrying. In Telepathic form, you gain prowesses by critting. And uh, those are kind of like, that is the most important kind of like build-up mechanic, so I should say. And you can get up to 10 prowesses, and obviously they significantly increase your special attack damage, but whilst you're in telepath form, it also significantly increases your crit rate. Now you can see that you shoot off nearly 100 and... Well, not nearly, 140k special 2s at 10 prowesses, which I do think is quite a significant amount of damage, considering... Oh no, I do think he is running Liquid Courage Double Edge, just that the recall damage was absorbed by the Force Shield from Professor X's synergy with Magnetos or whoever else is there. Now, she does have access to Concussion and Taunt as well, even though it, neither one of those debuffs kind of define her kit. I often quite actually forget that she can Taunt and or Concuss the opponents. But uh, one of the cooler things is, for me personally, her power control mechanic on her heavy attacks in diamond form. I think that is extremely underrated. Now he, he shoots another special two, and that is it. The entire Winter Soldier fight is down in 54 hits, slightly over a minute. So it's not bad at all, but obviously this was with class advantage, and now this next one is without class advantage. However, this time around, Emma Frost is a Horseman of Apocalypse, which gives her additional prowess, further increasing her special attack damage and uh, ability accuracy, and also gives her access to Unstoppable, should she happen to get hit. However, as we can see here, the damage number wasn't that much different with that 30% prowess included, because it does not work like as a damage multiplier, it's just an additive. Nonetheless, Let's see how quickly she gets through this fight. So she's at 10 prowesses, drops a heavy attack, has taunt active very well, drops her level 2. Unfortunately, the second part didn't crit now. It is quite rare that the special 2 doesn't crit if you have two prowesses or at the very, but you know, it can still happen. It's not a guaranteed crit. However, we can see that most of her hits at 10 prowesses are indeed critical. And here again, 93k crit. On the second part, still well over 100k damage from that single level 2. Now, just a nice little level 1 to pretty much finish it. 
And again, another thing that many people might not be fully aware is the power thing. Now it's going to be Emma Frost against Iceman. And uh, obviously, Emma Frost. And here we have encroaching stun as well. But uh, Emma Frost, ironically in this case, is immune to Cold Snap whilst in her diamond form. But that's all that matters because you start in the diamond form in this fight. And Iceman isn't Cold Snap immune. So Emma is a better crystalloid mutant when it comes to dealing with Cold, I suppose. And obviously here he's also showcasing the stun immunity. While she's in diamond form, Emma Frost becomes completely stun immune. So if you can manage the power bar sufficiently, you can easily deal with nodes like encroaching stun. And now a single, well, now a big level two to finish off this fight. Again, a very nice utility showcase from Emma Frost. Now we have heavy assault, encroaching stun, foresight and true strike. Fair enough. Let's see how... Emma is taking on this quake fight uh, and which aspects of that we will get to see now you can see again notice how little power is quake getting from those heavy attacks and that was a nice amount of damage it was like 60 some k on heavy attack that was a actually very beefy heavy attack right there so he's going for level two just before encroaching stun expires because now she's in diamond form and encroaching stun doesn't do anything at all so very quick very straightforward fight and you know very effective counter again if you know what you're doing emma frost is definitely one of those champions that seems kind of easy to play but she isn't i i guess you could say she's kind of similar in a bit of a sense to perhaps omega red uh, where Omega Red has some very particular things you need to be aware of, especially based on what opponents you go up against. And it's easy to pick up Omega Red and do okay, but then there's a lot of new ones, you know, how, how to slow pay, how to slow play, how to slow down your combos, how to stick closer to your opponents, and so on and so forth, and learning the exact timings. And there's a massive, massive difference between casual Omega Red player or somebody who has spent a lot of time with the character and gets the best out of Omega Red. And I kind of feel that it's very similar with Emma Frost. Anybody can pick up Emma Frost knowing, you know, the basics of her diamond and uh, telepathic mode mechanics and, and do okay. People who have spent their time learning the the exact you know moments or the things how to control opponents power better how to make sure you're in exactly the right phase at exactly the right moment do significantly better and that makes emma much much better as a champion than a lot of people think she is and now we have again another fight against red guardian here you do your parries and you drop your heavies and as we can see right now Red Guardian still hasn't even reached a full bar of power. And that's one of the cooler things also about Emma Frost, that you can actually get to your level 2 before opponent has had a chance to drop their level 1. And uh, I love that. It's one of the reasons why I like Mr. Negative so much, because you can do basically exactly the same thing. You can get to your level 2 before opponents can get to activate a single special attack. And uh, in my opinion, that's always kind of like a powerful mechanic to have. Because a lot of troubles often start in fights when opponents start throwing special attacks. Then abilities get activated, you know, block damage typically skyrockets or so on and so forth. And a very quick takedown there. And going up against Drax, we have Recharge, Power Shield, Bubble Shield, <laughs> Bubble Shield and Perforate. Obviously, Power Shield should be quite interesting. Uh, let's see what happens here. So the base idea is just to get some prowesses and uh, get level two and then that should be quite a nice amount of damage so he's done a good job getting to nearly two bars of power he had emma frost has a synergy i believe with cyclops where she can crit through block that lets her build up significantly quicker and now single level two and that drax is nearly dead now the only thing that's kind of left here to do is i suppose build to a level one and that should be pretty much enough telepath mode you crits through block, sweet. Single level one, and yeah, job's done. So obviously, solid, solid option here for power shield type of lanes as well, because of that uh, 
well, even if there wouldn't be recharge, I think she's just a solid option for power shield because of the power control dynamic abilities that she has on heavy attack. And uh, I think this is going to be extremely interesting fight. This is that famous lane where your special attacks basically get like 900 damage increase. So obviously Emma Frost isn't here the best option. This clip is purely included to see what kind of numbers we are going to see here because it's 900% increase. So that was, that, that was a whole lot of damage. <laughs> Considering how much weaker the first hit is compared to the second hit. And let's see what clip is going to be here against Khan. The, oh, that Khanak is going to be, I think it's the same path. Yeah, that, that is going to be the same path. Let's see uh, what kind of number we're going to see here with Emma Frost. Again, just get to the 10 promise and drop that level 2. Again, Emma Frost, again, to be clear, is not the best or a solid option here. There are champions like Rogue and Black Widow, Claire Voyant and I Hulk and a whole bunch of others that can do this better. Is No, wait, I Hulk might not have been, but Emma Frost and Rogue for sure. Anyways. Here we go, 136 and 903,000 crits. Now, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Obviously, also Emma Frost is an absolutely stunning character as well. So, you can't ever blame anyone for ranking up Emma Frost. I do think that, you know, maybe she's not a mainstream popular choice for a ton of people, but I do think overall she's underestimated in the community. And I also do think that... Uh, there is a very active kind of like following and fan base for Emma Frost in Marvel Comics of Champions. And uh, let me know what you guys think. And as I said, again, if you do want to showcase your own gameplay on my channel, reach out to me via Amazon. My email that you can find me on Amazon is in the video description as well as the link to register. Just enter your username, enter your email account is going to be made for you. And yeah, drop me a message. We can have a chat. And that is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the next